Hi everyone. I had a lot of good feedback from my first video, but actually the most asked question was, what exactly did you mean by having a wartime mindset? So let's spend a few minutes on it. It's probably not what you're thinking. Let's take a look. So what do I mean by wartime mindset? For me in the travel industry, it means um, a lot of what Jim Collins wrote about in chapter four of his book, Good to Great, where he talked about the Stockdale paradox. You know, Google it, no need to get into too much of it right now, but the concept is if you're gonna live through a crisis, you can't be on the extremes of having no hope or living on the extreme to some fantasy land that you're projecting yourself coming out of this anytime soon, right? Um, so somewhere short of no hope is reality. Right? It's usually not as bad as you think it is. And somewhere before fantasy land is having faith that you're going to get out of this. Right? So for me, if you think about your time as a normal curve, right? And it can, it can easy, you can easily go into these areas and slip into them. But what I try to do, my wartime mindset, is always trying to stay out of these two areas and keep my mind based on reality and have some faith that we're going to get out of this. So I try to stay in this area here and, and try to really stay right in the middle, maximize my time. Because if I can do that, that's what my, that's what my customers are counting on, my employees are counting on, my family's counting on, is not to swing too far right or left, but to stay here saying, I've got to deal with the reality of things and I have faith I'm going to get out of it. I don't have any, I, I'm not to the point where I have no hope, but I certainly don't have some fantasy in my head that we're going to get out of this anytime soon. Odd concepts, but what I try to do, so how, how do you, how do you get here? I try to find ways to, as I drift over to no hope, push myself back in from no hope. And when I get overly optimistic, I try to find ways to push myself back in to this area. Because I, I think it's a discipline of, when you go outside of this, find ways to push yourself back in. So for me to stay in my wartime mindset, it's all about staying away from the extremes. And when I find myself drifting into those extremes, finding a way to come back, right? And so the techniques I use, the approach I take is, at least when I start slipping into the no hope area, I start disengaging and engaging. I start disengaging from things that are not helpful, like all the pundits on TV and the talking heads and the thought leaders in the industry and all the bloggers in the industry and the newsletters in the industry that inundate you with just pure speculation. What are meetings going to be like? And, uh, will we ever get on planes again? And, um, uh, you know, is virtual gun, virtual meetings, are they going to take over your life? Will you have anything left to your business? I mean, none of that, frankly, is helpful, right? So I get rid of that to the extent that I can. The other thing I try to do is purposely engage with people that do matter, right? So my employees matter. My customers matter. My prospects matter, right? And I'm going to set up meetings with them. I'm going to talk with them. We're going to share information, right? Because we're all codependent on each other, right? And we can drop all the pretenses of I'm your boss and I'm your supplier and you're selling me, right? Because we can just talk like we're in this together. What questions do you have? What information do you have? What information can I share with you? This is where we are with the PPP program. This is, this is the line of credit I have. Um, this is when I'm going to send you back your deposits, right? Just engaging in discussion. And I found, ironically, doing that with prospects now is so interesting because people that normally would not talk to you because they know you're there to sell them, right? They'll actually pick up the phone now. You send them a note and say, hey, can I have 15 minutes of your time? I just want to talk with you. Right? And if you're doing that in a genuine way and you're not trying to sell them a darn thing, but you truly are calling them to say, how you doing? This is what I'm hearing. This is what I'm doing. And you're talking to them on a business to business level. 
You know, now you're building a relationship, but you gotta do it and you have to be genuine. And if you're not, it's not worth your time. It's not worth their time, right? So for me, stay out of the no hope zone, disengage from things that aren't helpful and engage with the people that matter. So alternatively, you wanna stay out of fantasy land too, right? You don't wanna trick yourself and start selling yourself that things are gonna be all right in two weeks or two months or six months. You just wanna be able to say, someday it's gonna be all right again and I'm gonna be there, right? Someday again, we're gonna run a nice big event, 4,000 attendees at the Bellagio, but don't put a time limit on it because that just sets yourself up for disappointment. So how do I guard against going into fantasy land? For me, it's living day to day. It's not projecting too far out and saying, what can I micromanage today? What's my cash balance? Who am I going to pay today? What bills can I collect today? Right? Um, uh, all the things, do we get any new orders today? Right? Anything you can do just to manage your business, and deal with today's problems, not worry about tomorrow's problems and certainly don't wake up worry about next month's problems, right? Deal with what you can today, live in the moment, day to day, manage your business. And that keeps you, that keeps you in the weeds and away from fantasy land brain damage, right? The other thing I like to do, and this sounds like a conflict, is to plot my comeback. I don't say, all right, this is my three month plan and in June, July, and August, we're going to be back to normal. So these are the things I'm going to do, right? I just try to throw a long cast out there and say, there's gonna be a day when we're back. It may look a little different, but I'm gonna be there. And so what are the things I can do now? The projects I can do, the videos, the knowledge bases, who would I hire? What should my website look like, right? What's my sales pitch like? Take on and build all those projects that you normally wouldn't have time to do, but they've gotta be focused on plotting your comeback, right? If they're just projects to keep you busy, and I hear all these people talking about, you know, do things to, to uh, uh, you have all this spare time, you know, organize your inbox and um, uh, go for a walk at lunch and, you know, take care of yourself and, um, uh, you know, reduce the subscriptions in your email. I mean, that's all fine. Do that on Saturday morning while your competitors are sleeping. But if you want to, if you want to really um, prepare yourself for the opportunities of the rebound. Plot your comeback. So that's how I do it. Uh, that's my approach. To stay in a wartime mindset is really about staying away from areas of no hope and fantasy. And those are the techniques I use. And I hope they're helpful to you um, to keep your wartime mindset focused on bulletproofing your business. I hope I helped. Thanks.